Samurai Jack Season 5 Episode 10. The finale is in the books. And boy, oh boy, this episode was a roller coaster ride. I mean, it had highs, it had lows, it was happy, it was sad, it was action packed, it was kind of confusing, it made you think, it had everything that you wanted in a finale. So, without wasting any more time, let's get straight into this video. So, guys. This episode starts off with really seeping into your emotions as you're seeing Samurai Jack being captured by Aku, obviously from the previous episode where Jack couldn't bring himself, you know, to kill Ashi. And Aku's pretty much telling the whole Samurai Jack world, hey, guess what, guys? I got Jack. You know, I'm gonna execute him. And as Aku was broadcasting to the entire world what he was going to do with Jack, we got a chance to see the old intro of Samurai Jack, that classic intro that everybody probably heard when they were a kid or when they first watched the series. Going on, And you can see the whole world is in awe as their friend, their buddy, who's helped them so many times in the past, is in need of help. And an entire revolution and war completely breaks out now this is where the action of samurai jack was at its peak because it wasn't just you know 1v1 or like jack versus a group of people like no like this is an actual legitimate war just like what we saw you know ashi fighting all of those guys you know many episodes ago taking place this was an actual war breaking out between all of jack's friends and aku and i felt that that was the perfect way to you know obviously have a conclusion to this because obviously the people that jack helped would want to have you know some type of you know a gift a going away gift for jack for all the stuff that he's done for them and in this we see that out of all the people that jack has seen in the past the scotsman was amongst this group and we hadn't seen him ever since episode 6 where he died like within like the first 5 minutes of the episode. And he had a very mixed opinion because like oh man that was really sad but kind of funny how he just came back. And he comes back with his army of daughters and they're all fighting against Aku. There are some casualties on both sides. It's not like Jack and his friends were you know doing this without taking some losses. Like there were blows on both sides and as all of this is going on you know Aku wants to execute jack and he wants ashi to do it as he's like too busy trying to figure out you know what, <laughs> what kind of weapon he wanted to use to finish off jack and you know you see everybody's jumping in to try and help jack there's even that big ass robot that comes in and starts you know fighting against aku which is what i loved i loved that scene and you know aku was just proving to be too much but once all those reinforcements came in everything was changing and it seemed like you know, the, the title of the battle was changing, but the true story of this moment was really dealing with Ashi because in all of the action and carnage that was going on, the casualties, Jack felt that Ashi was still conscious of what was going on inside of her. And even though she was trying to kill him as Aku had pretty much told her to, she was still in there not completely but she was in there and jack didn't give up and you know he was fighting against her in self-defense like trying to you know get her back to her senses he tells her that he loves her and ashi snaps out of it now that was a bit pokemon-esque you know if you guys remember from the first pokemon movie when you know like all the pokemon got sad because ash turned to stone and then like pikachu started crying and then you know ash like turns back to like a human because of the sadness of their tears and the energy it just brings them back so it was kind of like okay so telling me that i love you like snaps me back but in a way it kind of does because it makes ashi kind of regain the absolute control over herself and the awesome thing about this is that when ashi got her control back she now has all of the powers of Aku, so everybody's fighting, people are getting killed left and right. It doesn't necessarily look like this is going to be an easy battle because there's a lot of casualties. Aku has all of his demons out, but Ashi realizes she has Aku's power. And as they're fighting against Jack, and Jack gets his sword back with Ashi's help, the really cool thing is that, you know, Ashi starts fighting off Aku, and I really loved seeing that little clash where, like, it's literally, like, Aku's powers versus Aku's powers, and, like, Ashi's, like, this badass. But Jack tells her that, you know, hey, you have Aku's powers, and Ashi literally creates a portal and goes back to the past. Now, here is where 
you have the time loop being broken into this. So Jack goes back to the past with Ashi literally right after Aku sends Jack into the future. So what happens now is that Jack, who's back with Ashi, fights against Aku and he, he's kicking his ass. He's slicing up into little pieces. I like how you see as he's cutting up Aku. You see like all the little demon Aku's like running around like they're like, oh shit. They're like all moving around and stuff. And Jack like like is like cutting them up like you could feel like you could seriously feel the pent up frustration in both Jack and Ashy for what's going on, especially Jack because as uh, as us as Samurai Jack fans, we've been watching this show for years, man. And you know he's been trying to stop this guy and he can never. There's always some bullshit. It's the portals being broken. It's this. It's being sent in time. Like there's always something to stop Jack. And you really felt that moment of glory when Jack fucking put an end to Aku, man. Like, that was just such a good feeling. It felt so good after Jack killed Aku, guys. Like, that, there, there was no better sensation in the episode than that. And, you know, after Jack beats Aku, obviously the reverse effect would happen on the future because if Aku dies in the past, then that means that the future Aku would cease to exist. And as a time travel guy... I love time travel, guys. You know, I, I do a lot of videos about it. Time travel has always fascinated me. It starts making me wonder about the, uh, the Jack that was just sent into the future again while this Jack just came back to the past. Well, that Jack is probably going to cease to exist now because Aku is dead, which means that if Aku is dead, then he couldn't have been sent to the future, which means that the Aku, the, the Jack that came back, is now safe and in the time that he needs to. So that Jack that was just sent to the future should cease to exist because he can't exist anymore without with Aku being dead because he couldn't have been sent to the future. I know it's kind of confusing, guys, but <laughs> bear with me here. So we're seeing a happy, you know, celebration. I wish we had seen more of the future, you know, what's going on with the whole battle going on. Because obviously, you know, with Aku dead, you know, that's kind of going to change the whole time lapse of what's going on. And I would have been interested in seeing how all of that would have played out. I just would have liked to have seen at least like a time travel effect taking place. And we didn't really get that in the episode. But in the benefit of the present, we see that Jack and Ashy are about to get married. And... They're having a traditional, you know, Japanese marriage. Aku's looking all pretty, you know, they're doing her eyes. They're, you know, they're getting, they're trying to prepare her to get married to marry Samurai Jack. And this was a very interesting moment because <laughs> Samurai Jack is getting married. So this, this girl who literally tried to kill him, you know, like seven episodes ago, like, it's like, we're all cool. Like, I want to marry the bitch that I killed all of her sisters. And she killed her mother. And all of this shit that's going on. I love her. I mean, the, the, you want to talk about a weird type of romance? Like, let, let's actually sit down here, guys, and talk about this. You have a woman who tried to kill you. Who you killed all of her sisters. She killed her own mother. And as a result of this, she is the daughter of the guy you've been trying to kill for years. And now you're marrying her. You couldn't talk about a more fucked up way for two people to get married than that. Like seriously, if you guys know some type of fictional marriage or even real life marriage that's more messed up than that. Two people who could have never even thought about marrying each other, marrying each other. Let me know in the comment section below because I can't possibly think of anything else, guys, at the top of my head. But, you know, they're getting married. Everything seems like it's going to go well. They're going to have a happy ending. Jack is going to live in the past with Ashi. But, unfortunately, due to the time travel effects, Ashi fades. And the reason she fades is because if you kill Aku in the past... Then she can't exist in the future, which means everything that happened in the Samurai Jack future can't really happen anymore. 
So history is kind of reworked. This is kind of going more so of Back to the Future versus Dragon Ball. You see, there's there's different types of time travel rules. You have the whole grandfather rule where if you go back and you know if some and your grandfather dies, if you go back to the past and your grandfather is killed, then you cease to exist because you can't exist if your grandfather is dead. But in the Dragon Ball world, or what we've seen in other timeline shenanigans, it's not like one linear timeline. It's more so, no, you go back to the past and a new timeline is created. It's not necessarily that, you know, the timelines work, in, you know, interchangeably. So, in this case, Samurai Jack looks like it's going with the grandfather rules that Ashi can't exist if Aku is dead, which pretty much means that all of the timelines are kind of like... Sta stapled together like they're one consistent timeline that has to flow they can, there's no alternate timelines in the way the world the way samurai jack's world looks and because of this ashi fades away and as you see at the end of the samurai jack episode how like jack is like depressed he's really sad about what's going on he was just about to get married he was probably gonna get some nookie <laughs> <laughs> he was gonna get some nookie by the way that was for jack's blade if he listens to this review and if he he is he's gonna comment that in the comment section below he was gonna get some nookie with ashi and she fades away and the episode ends but as the episode's ending you see the beetle that represented like life and nature that you know ashi you know was attracted to ever since she was a child and then later on when she had the chance to kill jack when he was sleeping she found the the beetle once again or the butterfly and it kind of reminded her back of her childhood when her mother didn't want her to look outside into the world and through seeing that jack is seeing you know ashi kind of like the spirit of ashi through that beetle you know in a way it's like even though she's gone and i can't be with her you know I'm going to live the rest of my life. I've accomplished my goals. And that was it. And I'm not going to lie, guys. That was a really sad ending. I mean, it's like you went through all of this. You found somebody that you actually love. You know, you didn't really get a chance to slip it in yet unless you slipped it in before the marriage, you know. And, and But, you know, it ended. And the episode is over and samurai jack is done and i'm not gonna lie guys like i'm kind of bummed out like it's like damn like i wanted more like this episode was great and samurai jack has been a blast this season like i've really fucking enjoyed samurai jack like legitimately guys like these 10 episodes over the last two and a half months you know i've really enjoyed making reviews for you guys you know you guys seem to really enjoy, you know, having these conversations as I always, you know, respond to your comments and we have fun conversations and it's really honestly over. It's over. I can't see a way they can make the story come back. I mean, it's kind of like Jack just lives off in his world and he goes off and that's it. And I have a final Samurai Jack video I'm going to do to conclude my whole Samurai Jack series coming after this. But, and I'm going to do this as a joint video with Jack's Blade and my friend Bob. And I might also do another special video with a special guest. But ultimately, guys, this has been my Samurai Jack Season 5 Episode 10 finale. This has been it. The hype. Everything through this season has been great. I've literally thought every episode of Samurai Jack was great. Like, legitimately, I think I gave every episode a 5. I don't remember, but I think I did. Like, seriously, like, every episode was phenomenal. Every episode had something unique about it. There were fun episodes. There were serious episodes. There were life-changing episodes. There were badass episodes. There were funny episodes. They, like, everything. They did everything they could have done with 10 episodes, guys. Like, they legitimately could have done everything they did. Gennady Tartakovsky did a phenomenal job, guys. I know I'm praising the hell out of this, but I had a blast over these last two months. And as the final thing I wanted to say... In addition to this video, please check out Jack's Blade, who also does, you know, his own review on Samurai Jack, you know, and he always breaks it down with his very energetic style. But most importantly, guys, I mean, the one thing I wanted to say is thank you, because, you know, my channel is mostly known for Dragon Ball, and, you know, that's kind of where my channel, you know, pretty much gets most of its audience from, but... 
I really honestly appreciated the fact that you guys have been watching my Samurai Jack reviews actively over the last two and a half months. Like, my Samurai Jack reviews are very comparable to my super reviews. In several cases, they actually outperform some of my super reviews. And that really speaks volumes to showing how well, you know, you guys have shown me support over these last two months. And I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for a very fun 10 episodes. You guys are awesome. I love you all. Thank you so much for all of your support, and let me know about what you think about the Samurai Jack finale. So with everything else said, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Remember, as I always say, to have a great day, guys, and man, adios, amigos.